In this series of videos, we're going to talk about making custom biomes for Gaia. Now, of course, if you're going to make your own biome, your own environment, you're going to need some objects. So we're going to talk a little bit about bringing objects into Unity and setting them up for use in Gaia. Now, if you already have a working knowledge of how to import 3D meshes into Unity, then you can go ahead and skip this video and move on to the next video in the series. If you don't personally make your own assets, don't worry. There are tens of thousands of stores online where you can buy assets. The last lessons that I taught, we actually covered Quixel, which is a huge site that contains many, many assets and many textures. But today I thought we'd talk about another site called Kitbash 3D. When Kitbash first came out, they were really marketing to just the film industry, but they quickly realized that their products had a lot to offer the games industry as well. So recently they've started adding importing for different game engines, including Unity. Each of their products is called a kit. Now if we look at these kits, you'll see right away that they're each based on a theme. You can have a science fiction theme, you can have a type of city theme, you can have any kind of genre like fantasy, and each of them has a large collection of objects that allows you to build a complete environment. Like all these sites, you're going to have to register in order to purchase these products, but once you purchase them, they're instantly downloadable and at any time you can log in and re-download them if you need to. Of course, you don't need to purchase anything in order to make custom biomes, but I like to start with objects that I feel work with my idea. After looking through the kits that I own, I decided on one called Warzone. I figure it's time to make a little bit of an unhappy image in Gaia. I see a lot of pretty happy images, but let's attempt to make a biome that has some unhappiness to it. Now this has a lot of buildings, it has pieces of scrap iron, it has broken signs. It should be fairly interesting to make a biome with these meshes. Now, if you decide you're gonna use something from Kitbash, obviously you're going to have to register and make a purchase, and then you'll find the download for it in the account section of the site which is in the upper right hand corner. Now, once I click on this, it's gonna show me everything that I've purchased or downloaded from Kitbash. I'll click on the Warzone package and it's gonna ask me what format I want. We're gonna select Unity. And then over on the renderer section, I'm gonna select HDRP. All we have to do now is click the download kit button and the browser will start downloading a zip file. As soon as it's done downloading, we'll go ahead and extract it. Here's our zip file and it looks like it's about 1.5 gigs zipped. I'll go ahead and extract it. Now, what's gonna be inside is a Unity project, but we're gonna to have to solve a few problems. And one is that this Unity project is probably a lot older than the version we're using. I'll go ahead and delete the zip file. Now let's go to Unity Hub. Currently, the project hasn't been added, so we'll take a look at the project name and where it's at. You can see it is a Unity project. So I'm just gonna go and move this back up and go to the Add button. And now we'll find it on my drive and select the top folder of the Unity project. Here it is. I'll hit select folder. You'll notice right away that there's an orange symbol here showing us that the version that this was made with isn't installed on my computer. And that's fine because it's actually a really old version. What I wanna do is go over here to select version and select the version of Unity I'm currently using. I'll select Unity 220.3 here. As soon as I do that, the orange symbol goes away. And now we can actually click on the project and it's gonna to try to open it. 
Now it's going to tell us it needs to upgrade the project. We'll go ahead and click on confirm and let it upgrade the project. Now this could take a while since there are a lot of meshes and a lot of models in there. I'll go ahead and speed up the video just to make it a little quicker for us. Next, it's going to ask us if we want to update our materials to the current version of HDRP, and we want to click on OK, meaning yes, we want to upgrade them. After we click on OK, it's going to take a couple of seconds, but then the project itself will actually open. So let's click on OK, and in a second here, we'll see our window, and you're going to see the Render Pipeline Wizard window. This window tells us everything that HDRP needs to render properly. And I'm just going to click on fix all and that'll automatically fix everything in our scene. The render pipeline wizard is very handy when you're doing an HD project. It even has buttons to convert materials to HD materials if you need it. But for now, we're all set up. So I'm just going to close this window and I'm going to go to the window menu and I'm going to pick the wide layout because it's the preferred layout I like to work in. Now that we've got everything all set up, I'm going to go ahead and save the scene and the project. So I'll go to File, Save, and this is going to save our scene. I'll pick the Scenes folder, and I'll just call this Scene Test, and then hit Save. Now I'm just going to go File, Save Project, and everything is now saved. Now, the one flaw I've always had with Kitbash is that their models are never properly centered. They always set them up in a scene in a giant rectangle, and when they export it, it off-centers all their meshes. So if I take one of their meshes and bring it in, you're going to see it appear. Let me rotate around and find it. I'll hit F to focus. All right, so here's this mesh. Now notice that it's nowhere near the camera. It's not centered. The camera is facing the center of our game world, which is called the origin, zero, zero, zero. So I have to move the camera over to actually see the mesh. Now this is a problem for us because we want to spawn these objects. And if you're going to spawn something, the spawner should control the placement. It should control the offset of the object. So we're going to have to go in and reset all these to be in the center of the universe, which is zero, zero, zero. So in a game engine or an animation package, you have the center of the universe or the center of your world, which is zero, zero, zero in the X, Y, and Z axis. And then each object has what's called a pivot point. And this is where the object is moved, rotated, or scaled from. Now you can see on this building, the pivot point is placed towards the bottom in the center. So if I rotate, it's actually rotating from that pivot point. And the same is true for movement or scale. It will scale from that pivot point, and it will be moved from that pivot point. By the way, I'm just doing edit undo each time. So what we want is we want the X, Y, and Z values of this object to actually be at zero, zero, zero. So if I go and correct this, now this object is in the center of the universe. It's at the origin. While I'm moving the camera back so it's looking at the origin again, I'll just say that what we're going to do is we're going to make what's called prefabs in Unity. So we can actually make a copy of this object with our changes and save it as an original prefab. And I'm going to have to do this on each of these objects to recenter them all because I want them all to be just like this one. So I'm going to go into this folder here and I'm going to make another folder and I'm just going to call it prefabs with a capital P. Now, as soon as I make this folder and I drag our altered object into it, it will ask if I want to make it a prefab, which is just a copy of the object. So we've got our object. It's all set up. It's zeroed out. We'll drag it and drop it, and it'll ask if we want to make an original prefab, and we're going to say yes. Now we have a copy of our object, but it has our changes, 
and we can bring this into the scene at any time and it will always be zeroed out. And when I say zeroed out, I mean it's literally at zero in the x-axis, zero in the y-axis, and zero in the z-axis. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one more time. I'm gonna set this to zero, zero, zero. And after I'm done with this, I'll make another prefab, and then I'm gonna pause the video because I'm gonna do each one, and I would rather pause the video while I do it. When I'm done zeroing all these out and making the prefabs, I'll come back and we'll do the final stage, which is exporting it into the project that we actually want to use all these buildings in. The prefabs are all done now and they're all set up. Everything is centered properly and now we're ready to go and these will work properly in spawners. Now, you might wonder, well, what is a spawner if you're new to this? A spawner is just a piece of code that makes an object appear when the game is running or the film project is running. And it's literally used to place objects in the world at runtime. Now, the reason this is a big concern to us is because when we make biomes, say you make a biome for a jungle, well, what you're actually doing is making a collection of spawners. Say you want a certain type of palm trees, you want a cer certain type of rocks, you want a certain type of wood on the ground. These are all being placed by spawners. And the reason we want everything centered is because we want the spawner to control where it places them. So in order for it to place it properly, it needs to know the starting point. And typically the starting point is the origin or zero, zero, zero. Now, I just opened up the scene that we actually originally got from Kitbash, and you can see why everything was offset. They've laid it out nicely as a presentation, but when they exported it, it wound up keeping all these offsets for this rectangular layout. Most of the kits from Kitbash actually do this layout so you will have to go through the step of recentering them, but now you know how to do it. Now, of course, in our scene, we still have our test object and they're using the separate prefabs. So if I open this up, you can see here's one of the test prefabs. Its pivot point is at the base and it's properly centered. So we are good to go and we are ready to export all of this now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the Kitbash folder and I'm gonna right click on the top folder and I'm gonna to go to export package. Now it's gonna bring up this dialog and it's gonna show you everything it's exporting. So it's exporting our prefabs, all the texture maps, all the meshes, and I'm just gonna click export. And I will call this War Zone. And this is going to make a Unity package, which is kind of like a zip file. It's basically sending all of them to a single file, and we'll be able to import it into the project we're going to actually use. And if I want to, I can save this Unity package and use it in other projects. Exporting all these files may take a few minutes, so if it starts to take too long, I'll pause the video, and then of course we'll come back as soon as it's done. Now that we're done exporting, I'll just close Unity, and I'll bring over the Unity Hub, and I'm gonna open this up and open the project that I've made for the next video. It's called biomes underscore 001. I'll open this up. Now this has our Gaia plugin, and it also has the plugin for Quixels. So it's got everything I need to go ahead and make the biome. The project we're opening was actually used on the last tutorial. And now we're gonna import some more assets with it. So we'll go to the assets menu, import package, custom package. I'll select the Warzone Unity package we made and click open. It will process things for a second and then show us a list of everything we're importing. So you can see it has all the files that we exported from the last project, including our prefabs that we made. 
So we'll go ahead and click import and now it'll bring it into this project. And of course, as soon as it's done, you're going to see the same folder that we had before, which is the KB3D folder. And it's got all the assets that we just processed. So now we're ready to continue and make a custom biome in the next video.